Uh, hey, friends, how's it going? Thank you so much for joining me again. You are getting a shaky, wobbly camera as we are walking through the amazing Balboa Park painting. And actually, what's behind me is Spanish Village Art Center, and then over here is the San Diego Zoo. I'm Batman. So come with me as we go over here to Balboa's little secret. There's not too many people that know about this cool secret. My name is Gabriel Stockton. Thank you for joining me on this channel. We talk about watercolor. The funny thing is, is sometimes you, you think you want to go and paint something and you make a plan, right? And, you know, maybe even go to another country and go paint something. Typically, I like to paint that. But it's all under construction. So what else do you find? Are you... You've come all the way here to San Diego. I look at you and it's easy to see. You are the someone I've been trying to meet. We got this lily pond. Look at all this dappled lighting. If you haven't seen my video on dappled lighting, check that out. Well, there's that. Let's come over here. Wow, what a super good treasure. So it's it's early in the morning. These ducks are out here and uh, check them out. And I, I, the secret is there's actually some koi fish here. And uh, we're gonna try to find some of those koi fish. Maybe that'd be something to paint. It's not something I typically paint, but why not? Wow, look how nice and sunny it is. It's great. Look at that. Hope they get it fixed soon. Love painting that building. So here we are. Look at there, look at there. Did you know that these were even here? Very nice. Can you hear the nice bells? Let's look for something, someone to paint. Look at that. Wow. Dun, dun, dun. This guy's gonna set up and play his guitar. Good times. <laughs> I mean, there's so many great angles, right? So, you know, like I was saying, you might come to San Diego and you're wanting to paint that, but then you find a koi fish that like totally speaks to you, right? Look at this. There's so many great angles that I can find. Is this wonderful? Yeah, let's go paint. Let's take a look at this surface we have that I'll be painting on. This was a smooth piece of Arches illustration board and I've put some Daniel Smith watercolor ground on it in order for it to have some wonderful texture. There's my water bottle and my palette. I'll be using two brushes, one round and one bright. They're both synthetics, one acts as squirrel and one keeps a nice point. Let's go ahead and look at the gouache paint I'll be using. Here we have pyro red, yellow ochre, pyro orange, Hansa yellow medium, cascade green, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, lamp black, and titanium white. While I set up these paints on my palette, let's see if our friend is playing his guitar down at the lily pond with the clayfish. I bet those koi fish are enjoying that wonderful music. Maybe the ducks as well. I like to test the green and then add some color to it and add a little bit of water. 
as you can see, we're just playing with some greens, whether it's warm or cool. This is just the first layer of making our wonderful pond for our friend to swim around in. I hope you'll notice the lovely texture that we're starting to see with the Daniel Smith watercolor ground. It's a titanium ground. They make other different types of ground. Check my videos to learn more about Daniel Smith watercolor ground. Now we have this wonderful planter that's in the pond that has the lilies growing out of it. I thought this was a nice added bonus to the painting. There doesn't need to be a huge amount of it. There doesn't need to be just a little hint that there's also something underneath that water surface with the koi fish.
Did you notice how I used not a flat brush, but a bright brush to paint the fish? A bright brush is different because it gives me nice shorter strokes. I can also use it on the side. It's wonderful for cutting in shapes. This is also an Ultimo, which acts like a squirrel brush. I'm not worried about whether if this gouache paint is going to ruin my brush. I have a good soap that I would suggest by Escoda. It kind of comes in a jar that looks almost like something that you would use. There's the size again, number eight. Back to the soap. The soap almost looks like pomade that you use for styling your hair. And you probably could style your hair with it and wash it when you're done. We are using hairs in our brushes and might as well take good care of them and be a good steward over our wonderful things that we own. I'm making some nice little subtracted lines, leaving some areas that are light as I'm painting in darker areas with implied lines that have us looking towards the star of our show. Now I have a good sense of what my fish looks like Let's go ahead and darken up the flower box. Let's add some more values. We have a lot of mid-tones and a lot of light colors. Let's pump up the darks to really drive our eyes looking at those beautiful reds of our koi fish. Thank you.
When creating fluidity look to something, it has a directional pull. And we have that box. And what I want to do is just add some little accents. And then we're going to move into just painting our fish just a little bit more. Where he has a little bit of a cooler side. But as you can see, I'm using the gouache lighter colors on the dark. So we have some nice movement. Each corner of our painting has something different in each corner. That's definitely something well noted to take. Sometimes in a painting, we get to put, with gouache, some lighter and darker areas. This could be a finished piece as it sits, but let's see what happens if we just push it a little bit further than what it looks like now. If I go just a little darker by the box here, the box can be, just have a little more depth. Then we'll go over and darken up our fish a little, little bit, as if he was actually swimming underwater. If you made it this far, you're really interested in creating this koi fish. And I really suggest that you give it a go and try to paint this koi fish under the water. As you can see, I'm using some highlights. And we're not just using just white, titanium white. I'm mixing some yellow and also some wonderful little uh, buff titanium 
maybe color, which is almost like a khaki, peach. But we have these little highlights here and there in the water and around our fish that just gives a sense of light and air and breath. You can create this in your paintings. I feel there's also reflections of the green on the fish. That's why I mix some greens with this wonderful salmony orange color. I'm really excited for you to give this a go. We're about a minute or less from finishing up, but we've got a good sense of directional pull to the fish. Now we just might want to make a area that kind of encaps the fish and locks you in to just enjoying the fish for what it is, then exiting out of the photo. I really hope you have appreciated this and are inspired to try this yourself. Go ahead and hit that like button if you haven't. And go ahead and smash that subscribe button like you want to keep learning. Alright, let's take a closer look so you can see some of the wonderful textures and details that come through with the watercolor ground and the layers of the gouache. I appreciate you being here. Keep joining me. I'll see you in the next video.